My mystery used to say, you know, uh, uh, that horses were, were trained. They just uh, teach us the way they like to be ridden. You can train a horse out of fear, any animal actually, out of anything you want. You can train him with love, you can train him with fear, you can train him with all the nuances be between those, and you can um, train them by pain. Uh, you can train them all sorts of ways. If you have a good relation with your horse, everything is going to be easy. And it's been proven now more, most of the diseases that people and, and I suppose animals have come from stress, mental stress, physical stress. Uh, I, I have to say, and I touch wood, that uh, since I, I, I work the horses that way, the amount of colic and the amount of um, lameness and the amount of uh, problem with back and the amount of basically problem in general uh, are really minimum. Because I think the horses uh, know what they're expected to do, and they are kind of happy kiddos, and they do their job. And it's it's a happy kind of a thinking. I think that uh, I I remember one time I had a horse that uh, 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 his name was Portrait, and he was owned by uh, a lady that the husband was a veterinarian person, and and that horse had what they call uh, a, a Monday morning disease. They get paralyzed in their back. And uh, nobody knew why or how. Well, I knew why. He was stress. He was uh, he was under a lot of stress because of the incoherence of the training. And he came to me in, in for, for training when I was in Chicago. And he came with a big box of vitamins and injections and what I have to do and what I have to give him because of that uh, paralysis that he, that he was giving to to himself. In fact, it's a horse that was so much under stress that he would rather paralyze himself than go to work. Therefore, when he came, I, I say, well, thank you. I will do what you ask me to do. And I put the box in my tack room and never touch it. And, and my, the, that horse stayed with me for six months. And he never, never, never had any problem whatsoever. Because he, wasn't, he was a very nice horse. He was very sensitive. You could not do things uh, um, um, violently or strongly around him. You had to be really calm and quiet. You had to be really careful of his pace. And then he was a very happy horse. Um, I think that t too many times we invade people or horses' privacy or, 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 or understanding of life and we sort of rush into it without being sensitive to it. And basically, we make people sick or horses sick. And uh, if you have a gentle way, meaning that you are aware of that other person feeling, I think things get much more better. Show your tricks. Uh uh uh. Show your tricks. Go on. That's it. All of it. Come on. There we go. Very good boy. Yeah, is suddenly one of my, uh, my best friend you see here. My best friend. His, his fate was to be, uh, become a little uh, Portuguese steak. He was going to be destroyed because his, uh, his, uh, his, his breeder has a reputation of very calm and quiet horses. And that horse, when he was young, he used to strike. That's why he broke his leg, actually. He used to strike very hard with his front leg. And he injured a man in Portugal at that time. And he was um, chained down when I find him. He had, a, he had a little piece there that is missing actually from the, from the chain that was going into his, into his head. And uh, he was very, very tight and was very uh, misunderstood because everything was too much. You thought about him or you were thinking about getting close to him and he would just shake. He was very, uh, very nervous about it. And, um, and he was... Uh, Sort of a case. Therefore, I, I asked the man if I could buy it, and he says, "No, absolutely not, because it's a bad reputation for my for my breeding farm." And I said, "Well, I understand that." And I said, well, "Why don't we do a deal?" I said, "We are going to talk about his price now because I want to buy him, and then I want to take him for a month. And if I can't do a thing with him in the month, I give it back to you, and you do whatever you can with him." And, and therefore, I had a month to <laughs> to do my job, and he was walked right in canter after a month. And he was, uh, well, he was a wonderful guy. He must be 24, uh, 25 years old now. And that's, I got him when he was four years old. for us about 20, 20 years together. And we've done a lot, a lot of exhibition together, a lot of, a lot of wonderful stuff. I remember the, the most funny uh, thing that happened to us was that I was in the armory in Chicago. And there was doing a, um, uh, an exhibition doing a, uh, in the, inter the mid um, game for the polo field. And they did not tell me the timing was, was good enough. Therefore, the stable was underground. And I had to be upstairs in a matter of 
of minutes, like one minute to go up there, and I could not go outside and do the whole thing. Therefore, they had steps like this, <laughs> going one way, and the staircase going the other way. And I didn't have time. Therefore, I said, well, do you see the step? Let's go. If I was on top of him, before <laughs> we went down. And when we turned the other part of the staircase, I was a kind of a large lady who <laughs> wasn't going down the steps. <laughs> and she saw that horse just going up the steps. And she went like, oh! And I never see somebody shrinking so, <laughs> so much against the wall. And I said, took my head. I said, I'm sorry, madam. And I just, <laughs> I just went up there. And he was so happy to, to climb his steps for the first time. It was great. Yeah, very exceptional. Yeah.